Thank you to everyone for joining us for Global Marketing Day organized by SEM Rush. My name is Lee Yod and I'm the CEO of Top Rank Marketing. Now before we head into our next presentation, I wanted to take a second to remind everyone of how these sessions are working today. Every 30 minutes, um, we'll have a presentation for about 15 minutes followed by 15 minutes of discussion with our talented panel uh, guests that are joined us here in the studio. Our next presentation comes to us from I, Addison Zhang, Adobe Education Leader and fellow Adobe Insider. <laughs> uh, Dr. Zhang is, uh, Addison Zhang is an Adobe Education Leader uh, and she's the founder of Classroom Without Walls and she hosts a weekly live streaming show in which she interviews leading social media and digital marketers. She is a walk the talk marketer. Um, as we all can relate to, social media algorithms across platforms tend to prioritize live video compared to other formats of content. So I's presentation is going to show you how brands can leverage live streaming to build authority, influence, and community. Now, after the presentation, we're going to talk with our panel of experts. We have Bob Ruffalo, CEO of Impact, and we also have Brian Wallace, founder and president at Now Sourcing. I'll tell you a little more about Bob. Um, as a CEO of Impact, he's working with a company that's focused on helping people find success with inbound marketing through education, events, and agency services. Brian, as founder and president of Now Sourcing, is working with a company that uh, he's a, uh, Now Sourcing is an industry leading infographic design agency based in Louisville, Kentucky, and Cincinnati, Ohio. So there you go. Take it away, I. Wow, what an amazing event. So honored to be here and to share uh, what I know about live streaming with everyone. And uh, so I will discuss how brands can leverage live streaming to build authority, influence, and community. And here are a few points that I will discussing. First, why you need to embrace live streaming. And I will also share a few examples and how you can go live and share some tools and equipment and some content strategy. And uh, I think I can skip this because Lee did such an amazing introduction of what I do, who I am. And so first, why live streaming? Here are some facts and information. Do you know in two years, and 82% of the internet traffic will be video content. And live streaming is going to be a 70.5 70, 70 billion dollar industry. And uh, also here are more facts and information. All of us are entrepreneurs, in-house marketers, and digital marketers. We're always looking for ROI. And live video is a great way to enhance the ROI of our social media and marketing effort. For example, 55% of marketers think video is the type of content with the best ROI. And 73% of B2B marketing professionals say that video has positively impacted their ROI. And 30% uh, of people who watch a live streaming event will, will also be likely to attend the event in the following year. And uh, among executives, and if they were given the choice between live video and the written content, almost 60% of them prefer to consume the content through video. So all of the data here show the power of live video and video content. And next, I'm going to show you a few quick examples of how certain brands have embraced live streaming content to build their brand, influence, community, and authority. So here are the examples, Adobe and the Lululemon, and also I will be using myself as an example 
of course, right? Shameless plug. And uh, so in terms of Adobe, I really love how Adobe is bringing in like thought leaders in the industry and internal employees to co-create content, to talk about Adobe. It is such a great way to raise brand awareness and community engagement. So what you see here on the left is my dear friend, Goldie Chen, who is a thought leader in social media, in digital marketing. And on the right is an internal employee. So they come together to co-create some content. As you can see from the highlight here, and this video in particular, in particular gained 5,000 plus views. And here's another example. On the left is another thought leader in the industry. On the, on the right is a, another internal employee. And again, they come together to co-create content. And the engagement is pretty good. 5,000 plus views and uh, 30 plus comments. And uh, so here are some other examples between live streaming content and the traditional video content. You can see a big difference in terms of engagement, right? So here on the left, this video gained 500 plus views and the one on the right and gained 2000 plus views. And the engagement is not as nice as the live streaming content I showed you earlier. And here are two more examples. Those are still images. The engagement is even lower. So the next example is Lululemon. I really love, I don't know if you guys follow them starting last year, and they have been using live video to bring their employees from all over the globe to come together by leveraging live streaming content. And here's their one of their town hall meetings as they, they host their meetings as a live streaming show. Everyone comes to this and they ask questions, as you can see from the screen, very, very engaging comments from people, from the employees. And the employees, as a result of this, they go to their own social media platforms to talk about Lululemon. That is the best marketing that we're looking for when other people are talking about you. And the last example I will go over briefly is myself and how I have embraced live streaming as my lifestyle. And here are a few examples of me going live at the airport. And I also went live one time, I think, outside the bathroom, but it's not here. And uh, also here, the second one in the middle is uh, at a hotel. And the last one is I went to a science museum with my children, so I went live there. And uh, live streaming and also including the examples I shared with you earlier have really helped me accomplish all of the goals that you see here in terms of brand awareness, lead generation, community building, and thought leadership, and even collaborations with Adobe, HubSpot, SEMrush, and industry influencers. And the best part is, the money I spend doing my marketing is actually zero dollars. So my live streaming content is actually doing the pre-selling for me, the branding for me, the community building for me is amazing. Here is one example of me going live and with my dear friend Judy Fox, again, 5,000 plus views, tons of comments. And as you can see from the little box on the right, side of the screen and people every time after I go live, people ask me, can I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with you? What gears do you use? It's such a great way to generate leads and brand awareness. And the same thing here is another live streaming uh, interview I did and the little box on the top right corner is uh, from one person in my community and he has been watching my show for quite a few years and every single time when I go live, she does the marketing for me. She live tweets my show and it is pretty impressive. Again, when other people are talking about you, it is a lot more powerful than when you are talking about yourself all the time. So quickly, just uh, kind of to wrap up here, how to go live. And uh, there are most social media platforms you can go live natively, except LinkedIn, and you have to apply to go live. And, uh, and you can also go live natively and using third party tools to go live, as you can see from the second box here. And I give you a number of third party tools that you can go live. My personal favorite is StreamYard, hashtag sponsored. And uh, in terms of equipment, and uh, so lighting is very important. 
And I don't want you to feel overwhelmed by the long list of equipment I have here. When I got started on my live streaming journey almost three years ago, I had nothing. I only had my computer. I only had my smartphone. And that is enough to get started. And if you have been doing this for some time, I recommend you add subtitles. I recommend a quick QUICC, hashtag sponsored. I also use Adobe and uh, uh, iMovie and InShot to resize my videos to do some basic editing. And one point I want you to take away is to have a content strategy. Don't go live, don't producing live content for the sake of going live, for the sake of producing live content. Video, social media in general has to help you move your business forward and also be consistent uh, quality over quantity. I already heard other speakers talking about this. And I think one thing about live streaming content is you can really engage the audience. Audience has a, a higher level of agency to co-create with you. So really leverage that. It's very different from podcasts where you have a solo conversation, but for live streaming, engage your audience, ask them to share content, to co-create and co-act. And another powerful way with live streaming is actually go live on multiple places at the same time. I go live on those places simultaneously. And uh, my personal favorite is again, sponsored StreamYard. You can use StreamYard to go live on LinkedIn, as you can see from here. And or you can also go live on multiple channels, LinkedIn, um, Periscope, Facebook, and you can also invite an additional person to join the live streaming show. And uh, if you don't want to use StreamYard, so Restream also allows you to restream to multiple channels. I have been restreaming uh, for quite some time, and I noticed on social media, once people become really comfortable with one social media platform, they don't move. Unless there are people like us, digital marketers, we go to so many platforms. But most people, if they are really comfortable with LinkedIn, they stay on LinkedIn, or Facebook, they stay on Facebook. So restreaming to multiple channels really allow you to reach out to a much wider range of audiences. And uh, with Restream, you can even Restream to social media platforms in Korea, in China. It is pretty impressive. And uh, so here are just some of the equipment that I use. As Again, as I mentioned, don't be overwhelmed. When I got started on this journey, I only had my smartphone. So this is my, my big circle ring light I love. And this is the microphone that I used to use. And now I have upgraded, that's my son. And he, he also loves to be my co-host. And this one is a lot more expensive, but if you know live streaming is working for you, it's generating dollars, uh, ROI for you, it is time for you to do some financial investment. And that's my favorite uh, camera. And this one is for, for me to use when I actually travel. And that one is actually at Franklin Science Museum. I went live there and uh, this little cute camera is very easy to put into my backpack. I can just take it out. It's very convenient to use. So to wrap up, and uh, those are the points that we discussed, why you need to go live and some examples and how to go live and some tools and some equipment that you can use. And uh, going back to what I said earlier, getting started is the key. Taking action gives you confidence, clarity, and momentum. As you can see from that picture, I went live in that little washer room for two years. Uh, in that room, I interviewed Seth Golden, Mark Schaefer, and so many amazing digital marketers. So don't be scared because you don't have this technology. Getting started is the key. And that's my favorite quote. And uh, if you have any question, uh, feel free to connect with me. And uh, thank you so much. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, I, for uh, your insights and your energy. <laughs> I know, especially, it's 30, right? <laughs> in, yeah, especially in this afternoon session. Uh, it, that, that was great. And so um, I think we've learned a lot about how to generate brand authority, influence, and community through live streaming. Um, everyone that's watching, make sure that you add your questions to the thread on globalmarketingday.com. You can also post questions to the hashtag globalmarketingday. So... Um, all kinds of questions for for our our, uh, our panel here. Um, one, I guess, one big love, big uh, high level question is: What are some of the 
trends happening within live streaming. I mean, it's like, you know, okay, get started is a key message, but then what are some trends going into 2020 that we should think about? How about you, Brian? Sure. Thanks, Lee. Such a pleasure to be here. Wonderful set. And always great to be here with my friend I, who brings the energy in the middle of the afternoon to get everybody up and excited. So I get asked this question quite a bit. I would say that LinkedIn, although I is saying stream everywhere, I agree. And it's not that I'm married to one particular social platform. Over the years of the 13 years that my agency has been around, I've been professionally on the internet for 23 years. I've seen all sorts of wreckage where this thing is hot and then it goes away and then another one arises. I just feel that LinkedIn is a bit different because it's not a startup. It was already a Fortune 500. It has all of the backing of Microsoft. They have all sorts of engineers and product teams on a lot of very advanced, sophisticated things where a lot of the media, I find, makes fun of LinkedIn and they're like, haha, oh look, it's so cute. They got involved in something five years ago that it's live streaming. But it's a network of business. And as I tell a lot of people, when it comes to that, that's not an insignificant point. If you think about it, where your target market is, where your customers are, let's say they're at work and they have a corporate firewall whether they're a Fortune 500 all the way down to a small business. They probably have some sort of filters and firewalls, and they're going to block Facebook, they're going to block Twitter, they're going to block this one and that one. But guess what? LinkedIn is wide open because it's there for you to consume information, and a lot of people are just sitting back. There's probably a good 570, 580 million people out there right now. Very, very few people have it. Right now, I think we've got somewhere between 1,000 to 2,000 live streamers, so it's mm. a very, very limited beta, and also quite a number of brands. A lot of people don't realize, yes. but brands themselves are also live on LinkedIn. What is special about that, aside from it being open to that firewall, is that it's the only piece that gives you a notification within the system. I don't just mean like a little globe like Facebook right. and all the others, but when anybody is live now, so right before we got into this session, I was going live in the green room and just getting everybody's thoughts and opinions about Global Marketing Day. And again, great job, everybody that's been doing this. I don't know how you pull off a 24 hour, but I think as LinkedIn starts to really open the floodgates to that, and they will look for not just like a one minute inspirational thing, more of a more conversational social thing that you might expect on a Facebook. They do have certain specific requirements that you go live every so often. I believe it's every two weeks. And then also they want you to stream for a good 15, 20 minutes. So I feel like that's a place where you can really go deep and as I said, to really focus on a particular area where you're focusing on your content strategy. Right. Another piece, that, and I'll end with this, um, they don't give you the ability to schedule yet. So what I have done and some things that I've also seen some other live streamers on LinkedIn do, at the top of my about section, I'll actually have join me live 2 p.m. Eastern for my regularly scheduled. So if I'm not traveling heavily, yeah. I try to hit that without fail. And it gets people familiar, not just with you and what your style is, but that it's an actual show at an actual time. Right, there's yeah. some predictability to it. Yeah. Take it back on some LinkedIn Thanks. stuff too. I mean, there's clearly a barrier of entry with LinkedIn as well. So it right. means, you know, for you, if you have the ability to do that and you're willing to stay consistent to that, right. you have that opportunity where your other competitors might not be able to break through that right. and might not stay consistent. So you'll have that market. And then on top of trends, it might not be as much trends as much be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, advice. You know, where should you be streaming to? Um, I would say where your, your, your community already is. Mm -hmm. Start with that so you don't have to worry about building an audience somewhere too. So for us, we already had a pretty engaged uh, Facebook group with 5,000 people. So when we did our live show, we started there because we already had the audience there. And then find something that's easy for you to do, like interviews, I'm, I'm sure, are one of the easiest ways yeah. to get started. Yeah. Uh, we also decided to experiment with like a rundown show, kind of like Pardon the Interruption on ESPN, <laughs> nice. where we have a whole bunch of topics and we had the visuals on that. We tried to push, push the limits on that a little bit. So, I mean, those are some ideas to get started. Yeah. Great. Can I add a quick point to LinkedIn, like uh, live streaming? Actually, on LinkedIn, you can even create an event. This is something that I just mm -hmm. noticed. You right. can create an event, and LinkedIn will send you notifications when you actually go live. They will also show you who are the people responded to the event. They are actually doing this. So it just give you more like publicity. That's great. That's great. We've got a ton of questions coming <laughs> in. So. Awesome. Um, Here's a quick one for the panel. Is it better to have a script to lead the live or is it better just to respond to audience questions or a mix of both? Yeah, for, for us, when we, were, we did our show, it was much more about having bullet points. Like I, We would spend, maybe not even that long, maybe a half hour before every episode, we get aligned on how we wanted the show to flow. Yeah. But you're exactly right. I mean, the, the beauty of it 
is that you have an audience that's there that can, you can engage with and you can run with it. So mm-hmm. obviously still know the purpose of the episode, know what your objective is and what you want to get across, but don't do it so much as a script. Just kind of go with it. Mm-hmm. And that always yeah. worked well for us. Mm-hmm. What, here's another one for the community. Uh, what is your view of senior leaders of an organization going live mm-hmm. to engage with their audience? I'll go with that. I think they better be good. <laughs> I think it doesn't matter how senior you are in the organization. If you're not well-spoken, LinkedIn probably isn't necessarily going to care about you. You might show up on a brand page, you might show up at somebody's interview, but I think that live streaming is a special kind of crazy when it comes to video. It's not perfect. A lot of things can go wrong, as we all, <laughs> and, I, and I can definitely attest to that. I, I know that we even did one where babies, the internet cats, was- Babies, cats, animals, you never yeah. know. Right, babies, cats, animals, buffer, the endless buffering problems that might happen. So I think that it's just going to be extremely important that they are not just well-spoken and well-polished for video, but specifically that they know how to roll with the punches when it comes to live video. So much like what Bob was saying before, I always have a lot of waypoints. So if I'm doing, let's say, a 45-minute planned thing that I'm going to talk about something very narrow but very deep, mm-hmm. I'll have probably 10 points to that. Yeah. Be able enough to variate if there's anything going on in the background and at the same time if, to make the guest feel comfortable. So I think that it really just comes down to that person's comfort level. And I think even if you just by yourself get some coaching, mm-hmm. do videos mm-hmm. by yourself that go to nobody, that just go stay on your phone, I think that that might be good enough to get that going. But, but the, the biggest thing is to just start. Yeah, the, yeah. Moral, yeah. Yeah, the moral of the story is getting started, and yeah. that's the biggest thing. I mean, for, for when we did our show, when I was on, um, because of my status, my title mm-hmm. uh, of my company, there was more viewers right. You know, when I was not on. So there is something being that, that oh, the sure, audience yeah. wants to see the, the most important people of the organization. Yeah. Right. Um, so I would definitely encourage that, get them started. They're going to be rough the first couple of times. Oh, yeah. And that's completely okay. And but they there should is, be. They should <laughs> be. I mean, if they've never right. done it before. Right. Um, but, you know, getting those reps in. Mm-hmm. You know, getting those reps in is going to make it go a lot better. And there are coaches out there as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, go and get the coaching for video. And it's not that expensive. You can train your entire company yes. mm-hmm. and do like a video workshop. Yeah. Great. Um, lots more questions, but we only have time for one. <laughs> um, and it'll be this one. Any tips on how to plan upfront on how to repurpose or reshape content from live videos? I, there are so many ways you can like do blog articles, and I don't know if you guys actually know this, because I restream to different platforms, and on Twitter there's a new feature called Media Studio. Under Media Studio, there is another tab called Producer, and once you go to Producer, there's another tab called Live Cut. A Live Cut allows you to get video clips from live streaming content easily. So I do that all the time. I have so many one minute, two minute clips of my live streaming content that I repurpose. I share on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on different places. I also do uh, blog articles. I also create info, uh, infographics and uh, pictures and post them on Instagram. One quick thing I'll cool. add to that. Yeah. The, I don't. I almost don't even make videos anymore because I make live videos and the videos are made for you. So that's part of what's wonderful about that. Most of the platforms will either let you download it or they will let you embed it. So you don't even have to do any extra work. So I'm definitely all about what you're saying. I'm very much more of a a one cut kind of a guy. I've done enough videos that I can go on and on about these things for hours and make people feel good if I'm interviewing them. So we don't really end up cutting a lot of those things and we're able to still hold a good production value. And if somebody from your organization is doing it and they screw up, one good thing you might be able to do is maybe turn it into a GIF or a little clip and share <laughs> your company's slacks so everybody can make fun of them. <laughs> Outtakes, there you go. Yep. <laughs> Well, this has been great. Um, Thank you, everyone, for your time today. Here's a a, a trivia statistic. We have, during this global conference, over a million organic Twitter impressions so far. So big impact. Thank you for all your valuable content. Um, And so today, just to reiterate, we're joined by I, Addison Zhang, Adobe Education Leader. Thank you for your presentation. Bob Ruffalo, CEO of Impact. And Brian Wallace, founder and president at NowSourcing. I am actually almost done with my hosting duties here in New York. 
Uh, or maybe they'll keep me here for 24 more hours, I don't know. Um, you'll see a, in a second, you're going to see a short video, and then the team in San Francisco will join us for a couple more sessions. In the meantime, let's keep that conversation going by posting to um, social media, um, Global Marketing Day, hashtag, or globalmarketingday.com.